Hey, it's Jay, and I'm on site today with a couple of the lend hand workers. They're actually up on the roof getting some Christmas lights hung for a neighbor. And I figured today it would be great to just take you through the whole process and show you some of the tips we use uh, to get Christmas lights up on the roof and make sure that everything's done safely. <laughs> Before you get started on your house, one of the first things you want to do is plan out where the lights are going to go. What our Hands for Hire guys have been doing is having people send a picture of their house and then a little sketch that shows where they would like the lights. Make a sketch yourself and estimate the linear footage of lights. This will allow you to estimate how many lights you'll need. Always plug your lights in before getting on the ladder to make sure they work. Carefully check them for cracked cords, frayed ends, or loose connections. Now that we're talking about light bulbs, let's dive into the history and science behind the bulbs you'll be putting in your house. Many of the Christmas decorative traditions that we cherish today originated in the Victorian era in Germany, the UK, and the United States. With the emerging middle class created by the Industrial Revolution, the Victorians valued family time and Christmas became a more celebrated holiday. In 1843, Sir Henry Cole introduced the idea of a Christmas card, and by the 1860s, most middle class families had a live Christmas tree decorated with handmade ornaments and candles. I feel like Rick Steves right now. At this time, light bulbs have been invented. Humphrey Davies is credited with inventing the first electric light in 1802. But light bulbs were unreliable and very few except the rich had access to electricity. Thomas Edison is often credited with inventing the light bulb, but this isn't true. He simply upgraded the light bulb by sending direct current electricity through a carbonized piece of cardboard in a vacuum. With no oxygen present, the carbon filament glowed and gave off heat without combusting and would burn for 300 hours before the filament degraded. The incandescent bulb was born and later the filament was replaced with tungsten, which is much more reliable. In 1882, Edward H. Johnson, who worked with Edison, wrapped the first tree in red, white, and blue electric bulbs. Within a couple of decades, those who could afford it switched from kerosene lamps and candles on the Christmas tree to light bulbs. Let me show you how an incandescent bulb works. Electricity enters the bulb, it comes up and runs through a filament and then back down. So that's the flow of electricity. If it's direct current, it goes in one direction through the light bulb. If it's alternating current, then it goes back and forth 60 times per second. Different materials for the filament can be used, but most commonly it's tungsten because tungsten can withstand really high temperatures without degrading, so therefore the filament lasts a lot longer. As electricity passes through the filament, it heats that filament up to about 3600 to 4600 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really hot. If there was oxygen inside here, then the entire thing would combust catch on fire. But because it has most commonly that inert gas inside the bulb itself, it doesn't catch on fire, but it glows and it gives off infrared rays in the form of heat. That's why the light bulb's super hot. And then it gives off visible light. That's the glow that we see. Wine's Law can actually describe the relationship between the tungsten's heat and the actual wavelengths being given off. If we can get a peak wavelength coming off of this light bulb, then we can actually plug it into this equation and we can get a pretty accurate temperature in Kelvin. Incandescent bulbs are beautiful. They give off a soft, warm light that everybody really enjoys. But the problem with them is they give off massive amounts of heat, which is just lost to the atmosphere. They don't last as long as an LED because the filament only has a certain amount of lifetime. And they require a lot more energy and power to run, so therefore they cost a lot more over time. Nikolai Tesla pushed us further with his alternating current as opposed to Edison's direct current. National electricity grids were built all over the world and incandescent Christmas lights dominated with their warm, soft, white, and colorful glow until recently. LEDs or light emitting diodes have made a huge statement and are here to stay because they use very little energy and glow as bright as an incandescent bulb without giving off any heat. So light emitting diodes or LEDs are just a little bit more complicated than incandescent lights and I'm gonna do my best to explain it in, a, in a, just a simple format. Let's define what a diode is. A diode just allows electricity flow in one direction. So in this case, if we let electricity flow into this region here, we have what's called a conduction band, which is the free flow of electrons into this area. And then we have the valence band. And the materials that are used to make LEDs are able to separate two regions. Over here we've got an abundance of electrons, and over here we have what are called holes, which are missing electrons. So we have all these valence bonds. Now some of these are gonna have the bond, which is an electrons, but some of them are gonna be missing. This right here, this region right here would be considered a hole. And when we create 
a voltage difference. So we've got the voltage of this P side versus the voltage over here on this N side it causes these electrons to flow in this direction. Now because they're separated and these are looking for extra electrons, what ends up happening is these free electrons with lots of high energy jump over this little spacing, this little gap right here, and they fill the hole. All right, so you've got electrons that are close enough that they make this jump, and as they jump over here and bond, they lose energy. In order for an electron to be in a valence bond, it requires a lot less energy than uh, a free electron over here just bouncing around like crazy. As it loses that energy and makes that jump to fill the hole, there's a lot less energy required to have an valence bond than there is for a free electron, so it ends up losing energy and the energy is emitted in the form of a photon or an electromagnetic wave. Energy is given off in the form of light. It's given by the equation uh, energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. The farther these two spaces are apart, they can actually vary these on LEDs, the farther they're apart, the more energy it requires to jump over, the more energy that's given off from that electron. The higher the energy, the higher the frequency. If you look at a closer gap, you're gonna end up getting red light. Okay, so that's a lower energy, lower frequency. And if you have a bigger gap, you're gonna get blue light. So you've got energy at a higher level and frequency at a higher level, and the frequency of blue light is higher than the frequency of red light. Most LEDs have a blue base, so what they'll do is they'll create that gap, they'll put a fluorescent filter on it which absorbs a lot of the blue light, and then a lot of the energy of the photons is decreased, and as the energy decreases, the frequency changes, and therefore different colors of light come out of the light bulb itself. It's much easier to start with high energy frequency and then you can filter out some of the energy and then lower the frequency to get other colors of light. The big advantage of LEDs is that they require a lot less energy. The amount of voltage to make this process work is very low and then also we can change this and vary this so that the frequency given off is all in the visible light range. All right, so we get the right amount of energy of photon to give us visible light. Whereas incandescent bulbs, that we have no control. We heat up the filament and it gives off a ton of heat. So we're in the infrared spectrum, which we can't even see. Here, we're in the visible light spectrum and we have complete control over the electromagnetic waves that are given off. A lot of people are adopting LEDs because it costs a lot less than an incandescent bulb. It's just more energy efficient. Some of the negatives is they still haven't mastered. Because the base is blue, most of the LED lights that we see are very kind of cold in nature. They don't have that nice warm glow. An incandescent light, it's more on the red, infrared part of the spectrum, so the white light that we're seeing is just a softer, nicer, warmer light. Whereas this is more on the blue side of the spectrum, all right, giving us a cooler temperature of light. The next step is to plan out where the extension cords are gonna run. And then you wanna make sure that the male end of the cord is gonna be near that outlet so that you can plug everything in. The worst thing that could happen is you could get the whole job done and then find out that the, uh, the outlet's on the other side of the house and then you have to run extra extension cords. If you're able to put some of the clips on down on the ground, um, and make your life a little easier before you get on that ladder. Things go faster up there. Just using uh, these clips, they can be attached to gutters or they can go under shingles. They fit in various bulbs all the way from mini lights, from C6 to C9 bulbs will fit into these. These are C9 bulbs. Face the male end of the cord towards the direction on your house where the, the outlets are gonna be. I'm gonna take my light, there's a little hook on here. I'm gonna face that towards me. Push in here. Now there's a little circle right here. See this little tiny circle? It will fit right into that circle. And then they, they sit really solid. And you can take the clip and just turn it over on itself. And then it just locks into place. And then you take the wire and then it flows over to the next one. And you just keep repeating the process over and over again. I'm just gonna pop it in place and then turn it over like that. This little part 
it's just gonna go under a shingle or you could put them right on a gutter and it fits right on that gutter and locks in. Some of them are very stubborn. It's really hard to get them in the shingle itself and the clip will break if you push too hard. So some of these you may have to take out if you have a really stubborn spot and just get the clip in first. Now we use a spatula sometimes and we just take the spatula and just go a little bit under the shingle and then this slides right in. If you're going up on the roofs at all, you want to have two people. You need a <laughs> safety person there. Most houses actually have like hooks and ropes and you can tie to each other's partner and then you can just use them as weight and stuff. I don't know, just stay low. Do not go close to the edge like I do. I just came to help Porter and Dave out. They have a situation. They put all the lights up on the entire house and they got to these final lights and look what happened. Look, this is a brand new set of bulbs and this wire is, is just broken. There's not enough here to really splice it back in and it doesn't look like the housing is removable. So we're just gonna improvise and just cut this bulb out of the equation like that. I just removed the first casing on this one. I'm just gonna twist them together like that. And then I'm just gonna wrap the whole thing with some electrical tape. I'm back at my house now and part of being safe is doing what you're comfortable with, especially when you're on a roof. I wanted to light up the whole house, but instead of going all the way up and putting bulbs all the way on the roof line up top, what I ended up doing is running lights on the bottom here. Is I put some spotlights up on the house and it's just a easy way to stay on the ground, be safe, and get your whole house highlighted without risking your life and going all the way up there. guys are here at the second house. This one's a little bigger. What's the favorite holiday tradition you do with your family? I like doing the Christmas trees, decorating. You know, we got our tree now, but we're not gonna decorate it until uh, our son comes down. He's coming down on the 17th from Boston. I'll get the lights in because I'm so particular, it takes me, I remember one tree, it took me like, I, well I had an 11 foot tree um, sometimes. Wow. It'd take me like seven or eight hours just to do the lights. So, they, <laughs> so, so now I got time till the 17th to get the tree in the house that's and awesome. get the lights on it. Oh, that's great. Porter, what's one of your favorite holiday traditions? Um, probably Elf on a Shelf. My little brother loves our little elf, Charlie. 